So welcome back to Natural Language Processing. Uh, the next segment is going to be about extracting collocations from text. So collocations are phrases that have uh, dictionary definitions of their own, and the, those definitions are different from the meaning of the individual words. For example, if we say that somebody kicked the bucket, that doesn't mean that uh, the person actually literally kicked the bucket. That just means that the person has died. So there's a famous saying by Firth from 1935 that says you should know a word by the company that it keeps. So what that means is that words have meanings that depend on the words that surround them. So in general, phrases have many different uses uh, and many different categories. Uh, so here's some examples. A dead end is a street that doesn't have an exit. It's not somebody who has died. Uh, strong T, the example here is uh, to indicate that even though the word strong and the word powerful are synonyms, we don't say powerful T, but we always say strong T. So those two words form a collocation that is different from the meaning of the individual words again. Uh, names of people and names of diseases are other examples of such phrases. So collocations have different properties. Uh, they're commonly used. Uh, they're not just one-time occurrences. Uh, there are no general syntactic or semantic rules about them, and they're very important for na non-native speakers uh, when they learn a language fluently. Uh, collocation acquisition or learning of collocation from text is very important for natural language processing applications in uh, things like uh, question answering and machine translation. Uh, there are different, uh, uh, there's not a common agreement on what exactly forms a collocation, so I'm going to try to give you some examples here of different multi-word sequences and what makes them different. So one of those categories is called idioms, second one is called free word combinations, and the third one is called collocations. So here are some examples of those. Uh, idiomatic expressions include things like to kick the bucket, dead end, and to catch up. Collocations include things that consist, in this case, of common words which, when combined, have a meaning that is slightly different from the meaning of the individual words. So, for example, to trade actively, a table of contents, or terminology like orthogonal projection. And the third category is just free word combinations. We have, again, common words, but combining them together is very compositional and it doesn't convey any special meaning to the phrase. For example, to take the bus just means there's a bus and you take it and you go somewhere, the end of the road or to buy a house. So we're not interested in free word combinations, we're mostly interested in idioms and collocations and in particular collocations. So what are some properties of those? So uh, they're arbitrary, so substitutions are not usually allowed. For example, we can say uh, to make an effort, but we cannot say to make an exertion, even though effort and exertions are similar. We can say running commentary, but we cannot say running discussion. And we can say commit treason, uh, but we cannot say commit treachery. Those are uh, collocations are language and dialect specific. So if we go from one language to another, we'll notice that the collocations don't necessarily get translated by translating the individual words. So for example, in French, to say to direct traffic, we say régler la circulation, which is something like regulate traffic. In uh, other languages, for example, Russian or German or Serbo-Croatian, it's actually the word uh, regulate that is used for uh, directing traffic. Another example is in American English, uh, people say to set the table or to make a decision, whereas in British English, people say mostly to lay the table and to take a decision. Uh, here's more, one more example in French. Semer le désarroi means to wreak havoc, and the actual translation is uh, to sow disarray. So, semé means to sow. Uh, so, collocations are common in technical language and they are recurrent in context. So, there are many uses for collocations. They can be used, for example, for disambiguation. If we have some ambiguous word like the word bank, if we have another word near it, for example, loan or river as part of a collocation, we should be able to disambiguate the word bank very easily. They're also very useful for translation and also for text generation. So grammatically speaking, there are multiple types of collocations. Some of them are grammatical, which include things like phrasal verbs, for example, come to, put on, afraid that, fond of, and so on, and prepositional phrases like by accident, and so on. They can also be semantic, but only certain synonyms are allowed. And the others that are very flexible in terms of the physical location of the words that form them. So, for example, we can say, find something by chance, 
And those words don't have to be necessarily near each other. They can be an intermediate uh, set of words in between. So find followed by an entire clause by chance. So one important distinction in collocation analysis is between uh, the so-called base and the collocator. So the base is uh, defined to be uh, what uh, bears most of the meaning of the collocation. So writers think of the base first uh, and foreign language speakers search uh, for an expression in the dictionary based on the base. For decoding or for understanding purposes, it's actually more appropriate to store the collocation under the collocator. So here are some examples of bases and collocators. You can have nouns and verbs such as set the table. The base here is the noun table and the collocator is the verb. Uh, noun and adjective, uh, the base is, would be the noun and the collocator is the adjective. Uh, for cases where you have adverbs and prepositions, uh, the adverb and the preposition are always the collocators. So how do we extract collocations automatically from text? Do we just take the most common bigrams or perhaps trigrams and foregrams? It turns out that this is not the right approach because uh, very often uh, those correspond to just free word combination. Uh, what if we just dop some of the function words? Well, that turns out to not give us any additional mileage. One other possibility is to look at part of speech sequences, but as I said before, uh, collocations are fairly arbitrary and there is no reliable way to extract them based on part of speech sequences. Okay, so uh, let's look some, at some techniques for extracting collocations that work. So one of the most common techniques is based on mutual information. Just to remind you, uh, the mutual information between two random variables, i, is the log of the uh, ratio of the joint probability uh, divided by the product of the individual probabilities. Uh, so for example, um, larger uh, values of i are, means that uh, the collocation is stronger. And if the mutual information is equal to zero, that means that there is no correlation between the two words and they don't form a collocation. And if the value of the mutual information is negative, that means that those words are actually less likely to appear together than you would expect by chance. Okay, so one of the techniques that is used to extract collocations is based on the so-called Yule coefficient, which is very simple to compute. Uh, suppose that we have two words, W and X. Uh, I'm going to use the following notation. Capital W and capital X means that th those particular words appear in the given bigram. And little w and little x means that those words don't appear. So A is the frequency of pairs that involve both words. B is the frequency of pairs or bigrams that involve just one of the words. C is the other one. And D is neither. So the U coefficient is computed by taking the diagonal of this uh, contingency matrix. A, D minus B, C divided by the sum of uh, the same numbers, A, D plus B, C. And this gives us numbers in the range, again, from minus 1 to plus 1, where 1 indicates a very strong collocation. Let's look at an example now. So in the top left corner of the spreadsheet, we have uh, A equals 800. So those are the cases where both words appear. Uh, then we have B and C, 160, 180. And finally, D equals 80 are the cases where none of the words appear. And then we can compute the formula. And we get a score of 0 0.38, which is... Um, mildly strong collocation. So here's an example from uh, the Hansard corpus of uh, Canadian parliamentary proceedings uh, that includes both French and English uh, texts. Uh, a technique like this was used to extract uh, collocations that translate from one of the languages to the other. So the word prime, as in prime minister, was translated as uh, the following words in French based on their mutual information uh, in sentences that are aligned between the two uh, languages. One other thing to uh, think about is whether a collocation is flexible or rigid. So here's an example from a paper by Frank Smadja. P plus 1 means that the second word of the collocation appears exactly after the first one. P plus 2 means that it appears two words later. P plus 3 means that it appears three words later and so on. P minus 1 means that it appears right before. As you can see, in this case, we have a pair of words that appear together 8,031 times. And in most of those cases, 7,900, they appear right next to each other. But there are still some cases where they appear uh, with a small number of words in between. So this would be an example of a fairly uh, rigid collocation, which only has a few examples where it doesn't work. But there are cases where you can have even more rigid collocations, where all of the numbers would be at P minus 1 or P plus 1. So this is uh, the pair free and trade. 
So Extract was a system developed by Frank Smadja, uh, and uh, it was able to extract collocations like the Dow Jones Industrial Average, uh, or flexible collocations like the nicest composite index of all its listed common stocks fell, and then some number to some other number. Now let's see how we can translate collocations. So as I mentioned before, translating uh, collocations is not trivial. You don't want to translate them one word at a time. Uh, here's an example, brush up a lesson in French. It gets translated as repasser une leçon. Repasser means to go over. Uh, bring about, which is an expression in English that is uh, written by as a phrasal verb. In Russian, it's translated as a single uh, word, asusciat. And some examples from the Hansard's corpus, uh, late spring, which is translated as fin du printemps, which means end of spring. And Atlantic Canada Opportunities Agency gets translated as Agence de Promotion Économique du Canada Atlantique, which is a slightly different uh, translation, so economic promotion of Atlantic Canada. So here's some examples for websites uh, that contain uh, phrasal collocations and English language idioms. And there's a large website that includes many more of those uh, called idiomsite.com. So this concludes the section on collocation extraction.